Okay, well, first of all, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this process. Um, it's important to me for um, a number of reasons. Um, I would like to share my screen with you as I start my presentation. And tell you. Um, so I just wanted to let you know um, how I came to be here. Um, a few years ago, I had no idea of, of much of the effects of wireless uh, radiation. And um, I knew, I'd heard there was a little bit of problems with um, cell phones, and I, I always was a little bit careful, but I didn't really think much of it. And then um, I was a teacher, I worked at a school, and I heard that they were going to put up a cell tower across the street, and there might be some possible adverse effects. So after hearing this, I decided to do some investigation. I was a teacher there, my daughter was a student there, and I was concerned. Um, the more I learned, the more concerned I became. Um, I saw so much research, peer-reviewed research. I was very, very alarmed. I heard that there was testimony in the House of Commons to the Standing Committee of Health that girls' eggs were being radiated, which could affect future generations. Um, I learned that Wi-Fi was a Class 2B carcinogen in the same category as lead and DDT. Surely this must be a mistake, or at least as... Um, somebody who cares about students, I didn't feel comfortable using the Wi-Fi. Um, so I unplugged the Wi-Fi. Um, previous to doing this, um, students had come to me saying, oh, Mrs. Kleparchuk, why are we sick all the time? And we kind of laughed it off because they were sick all the time. I, and I could only send them to the office so many times. And then eventually I would just say, you know what, put your head down, get a drink of water, see how you feel. Um, they experienced dizziness, nausea. Um, one student who had a ho horrible earaches all year, um, so bad that he had to go home, he never had another one. I never told my students that I unplugged the Wi-Fi. Um, I personally noticed some tachycardia, things with my heart. I would be sometimes uh, carrying my son who came to see me at lunch and my arms would suddenly feel like I didn't have control of them. Um, I knew that there was something uh, going on and that is how I would like to start my um, presentation. I'm going to copy something into the chat room and I'm going to ask you to please pull it up on your um, screens and I'd ask you to watch a short video clip. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Tens of thousands of doctors in all branches of medicine in all parts of the country were asked that question. The brand named most was Camel. Smoke Camels, the cigarette so many doctors enjoy. This new insect destroyer contains a lot of DDT. Its DDT content is even higher than government specifications. Ideal for vertical surfaces, on fruit and vegetable stands, in cupboards, and it's perfect for ridding Fido of those unwelcome house guests. This contemporary home shows how modern asbestos materials can be adapted to any style or design. Notice how the asbestos cement sidewalls help add dignity and charm. Oh, it is attractive. Yes, and it'll stay that way, too. That's what I like about it. Okay, I'm going to move very quickly now. So dispelling three common myths. Canada, Health Canada's guidelines are very protective. I'm sure you've heard lots of testimony today that the, health, that the guidelines are only based on a heating effect only, which was um, based on a model of a 220 found six foot tall man, um, and there was some definite errors in uh, or some oversights and that that I wanted to talk about. Um, a serious error was reported in Canada's Safety Code 6 and it was reported in the examination of the health impacts of radio frequency electromagnetic radiation. Um, a big part of a problem with Safety Code 6 was humans were not included as conductors in a circuit. A model of a, a, you know, a large man was used um, so not only were humans not con included in the circuit, but they didn't include the fact that children absorb 10 times as much radiation into their bone marrow, twice as much into the skulls, multiple sources of radiation were not considered, and I asked if there was any research on kids that had braces or any kind of metal pins or things like that, and I did receive no response. I was concerned because my daughter had some metal pin. Um, sorry, she had some metal appliances in her mouth, and uh, that really concerned me. Um, myth number two, scientific research does not demonstrate health risks from low level of wireless exposure. Actually, this is false. There are over 5,000 scientific papers um, that demonstrate harm. Um, there's 1,800 new 
specific peer-reviewed studies thousands of times below Health Canada's guidelines in the 2012 Bioinitiative Report. Um, it calls for microwave radiation to be classified as a human carcinogen. And actually, when it was um, classified as a class 2B carcinogen, um, I believe that it was there was only one country, um, which was the United States, that really pushed for that. Um, and there was 29 countries that were pushing for it to be an actual um, definite carcinogen. And I heard there was lots of problems with that study as well, such as um, not following participants for long enough, excluding people that should have been included, um, and a number of problems. What does the science say? Um, Peer-reviewed, replicated, and published science, show, science shows many different risks that we cannot sit by and watch while our children are exposed to this. DNA damage, irreversible for infertility, um, this is not acceptable to expose our children to, especially without the consent of parents. I was never told as a parent that my child was being exposed to microwave radiation. I do not consent. My school boards told me I don't have a choice. They are providing the safest environment possible because Health Canada says that it's okay. Um, that is unacceptable. There's some new studies that are showing um, <clears throat> that the uh, levels of electromagnetic radiation in the mother's sleeping area are linked to autism. Here you see a graph that shows the um, increase in microwave and the increase in autism spectrum disorders. Um, they measured the level in, in the mother's bedroom and in the child, children's sleeping area and they were very surprised what they found out so far. This is a very important slide and I'm going to come back to this one. Myth number three, Wi-Fi levels are the same everywhere. Actually, they're not. In schools, we use generally an industrial strength microwave radiation, and it's similar to standing about 100 meters outside of a cell tower all day. Um, 50 states across North America. This program is offered to over 200,000 health professionals. If we are learning that these frequencies are dangerous, it's an emergency that they are not being used in our schools. Um, the Auditor General has reported that poor information sharing um, is a problem within our government and it seems to be that's exactly what's happening right now. Um, so as back to the examination of electromagnetic uh, radiation, um, I was saying there was testimony shared in the House of Commons that girls' eggs were being damaged, possibly irreparably affecting all the future generations. There was a study in Toronto by Mikrowski who said that when they studied mice um, exposed to levels of electromagnetic radiation less than we have today, they became infertile generations. What does that mean for people today? Where are we going? The NDP complementary report urged that children should not be forced to be exposed to a technology until it is proven safe. Um, and I agree. Um, they also pointed out in the report that there is effect on the bee colonies and we need the bees as pollinators. This is something we cannot stand by and um, ignore. One thing that I really noticed um, with the health can or the recommendations from the Standing Committee of Health is that these recommendations are not being followed out. This is um, a general overview of them. It said Health Canada and Industry Canada were supposed to have a comprehensive risk awareness problem, pro program. As a teacher, I had no idea what symptoms to look for and I didn't know as a parent. Um, I had no idea and, and basically if they were related to Wi-Fi and I go to the doctor, my students go to the doctor, they might be being misdiagnosed and I'm sure that's already happening. Um, they were supposed to promote the safe use technologies. Um, they were supposed to have a process in place to receive and respond to reports of adverse effects. I went to the health minister about this. I've written letter after letter to anybody I could afford, the provincial men health minister, the federal health minister, everybody. Nobody, um, I was not told till quite some time later that there was a system in place to report adverse effects. Once I did report adverse effects, I was told, oh, well, um, there are no adverse effects because we're following safety code six and so it doesn't exist. I emailed back, I said, well, aren't you going to go check the levels in the school and make sure that they're okay? Aren't you going to ask me any questions which students there are and do any investigation? There was no follow-up ever. 
Um, they were also supposed to examine EHS and policies on radiation in other countries, and they have not done that in either. The report also asked for the um, to that the error and safety code six be investigated. As you can see here, um, Canada has very allows a lot of radiation compared to other countries, although they share information with the schools that they're some of the most uh, protective. Here's a report showing damage to birds and bees and wildlife, um, which cannot be ignored. Other effects or other concerns, cumulative effects were not considered. Um, government looks at averages, not peak levels. Um, those are biologically important. For example, if birds are exposed to a frost, they die once a certain temperature is reached on a given day, regardless what the average temperature is that day. Um, as I said, I, I, once I heard about these possible effects, I unplugged the Wi-Fi in my school. My students got a lot better. My own daughter suffered terrible migraines once Wi-Fi was involved. I pulled her out of school. Here's a teacher pulling her child out of school and homeschooling her. Hmm, all of a sudden, her migraines all went away. She's doing much better. Um, my son, at one point, he ended up having a seizure. And the doctor said, well, he doesn't have a fur. That's very strange. He's not sick. I thought, what was different? What could be different? And then I saw out on his train table, he had the Wii controller. Are they related? I don't know, but we really need to look into it. Um, where do other teachers' unions stand? Three Teachers' unions representing 300,000 teachers are taking action on this. At what point is our, our health agencies going to come in and help out in this issue? Um, parent groups, fortunately, are taking action, creating safe schools and initiatives. Um, warnings on these devices are not being followed. You can see the BlackBerry um, warning here. It says, keep it away from your body. We're not being told this. We're not teaching our kids this. It says, um, keep it away from the abdomen and, and the lower abdomen of teachers. There's actually research showing damage to DNA two meters from a phone. Um, and many organizations are saying to keep at least a meter away from people while you're using a phone. There's also research showing damage from texting. Marcy, I'm sorry to interrupt, but could you wrap it up, please? Because we've got a lot of other people waiting to say something. So you'll have to. Yes, I can. Go. Yes. OK, I just have uh, one or two quick slides. Here are some um, cell, some examples showing cell towers. This um, increased risk. This is important because there are many cell towers being placed by schools. It's unacceptable. Um, here's a cancer cluster. All these children in room 131, 131, 131. There were several cancer clusters in the school right across from a cell tower. I heard no one is in enforcing the levels. This tower exceeded safety guidelines. It still exceeds safety guidelines, and no one is doing that. Um, there's a new study out of Brazil that shows almost 5,000 cancer deaths from cellular antenna radiation. Eight, um, it was a study over 10 years. They found percent of the cancer deaths occurred around um, 500 meters of a cell tower. Um, actually, yeah, 500 meters of 300 cell towers. So why is this important? Sorry, one minute. I, just my most important point. This is the same level of radiation we're exposing our children to with the Wi-Fi in our schools. These deaths could be, seem to be directly related to those levels. If we're exposing our children to this kind of radiation in schools, let's put two and two together here. We need action. Cancer, there's too much evidence. We need to protect our students in universities and in lower schools. Um, why standards need to change. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your time. Yes, I understand. Thank you for bearing with me. We had some technical difficulties. Uh, it, it went far over. Thank you very much uh, for your consideration. And I'd be, I'm looking forward to following up with more information. And Thank you.